Hi everybody, it's Richard here and welcome to another video. Um, I got back into collecting records about two and a half to three years ago, more two and a half years ago. Um, one of the big reasons why was actually watching a lot of uh, videos on uh, YouTube and I forgot how nice vinyl looked and I was one of the lucky ones. I had a, a half decent collection of about 700 albums or so forth but it, um, still and I hadn't uh, got rid of them but I had stored them away and I decided right I'll bring out the David Bowie ones and clean them up and put them all nice and so forth which I did and then the T-Rex ones came out and then they all came out and the CDs were all dumped in another room um, the last albums I bought new at that time was about 1991 because I got my first CD player in 91 and so it was CDs ever since then with the odd um, vinyl album which I might find cheap somewhere in um, a second hand store or whatever but generally no no more new vinyl so a couple of about two and a half years ago as I say I started um, collecting again and this time it's just spiralled, it really has gone out of control really because I've more or less tripled my collection. So I have inside two and a half years. And considering really my first collection of around 700 odd al albums was over a period of truthfully around 10 years, 10, 11 years, uh, it's got absolutely ridiculous. However, this video is about um, buying some albums that I would never ever ever have bought at the time of release. I would never have bought them in CD either. But I bought them because either one, they were cheap. Two, they looked in half decent condition. But most importantly, three, they were vinyl. And this is stuff I have actually bought over the past two and a half years which I never would have bought. So in, in effect, I'm risking the integrity of my collection because I'm not fans of these bands or singers or whatever but I thought huh, that actually looks all right I'll give it a go and see what it's like whereas whenever I was in my mid-20s I wouldn't have touched it so anyway we're going to start off with now before I say anything these are not guilty pleasures guilty pleasures are a completely different thing I may do a video on my guilty pleasures which will probably lose about every sub I have because some of my guilty pleasures are guilty, but still. Okay, now some of these albums I know on the BC are very, very well respected. Uh, so whenever I say risk my integrity, it's a case of me not really liking the artists back then. Um, it's not a case of, oh, that those are absolute crap, because they're not, because I know a lot of people love some of these albums, but they just didn't appeal to me at the time. And the big question is, I'll, I'll say this after every album, if I put a, if there's a big scratch were put on this album, would I replace it? And so that tells me whether it's worth its place in my, uh, my collection or not. So first up, it's a, a huge, huge seller, but I, at the time I could not understand why people liked this band. I thought they were so boring. Super Trump, Breakfast in America. And I thought, right, I'll buy it, I'll try it. It's vinyl. And I actually quite enjoyed this. And I went on to buy a couple more of their albums. I bought Crime of the Century and like, the Greatest Hits. So uh, Logical Song is the one I really knew of. This and is this the one that's got It's Raining Again? Or is that the Logical Song? Oh, I don't know. I've played this a few times. I don't know the, the songs by title, but um, if this had a scratch, would I get it again? I probably would actually, you know, I, I do quite like it, it's, although I think it's more background music. Okay, this one here, I could never understand the appeal of this girl, and that's Chardé, Diamond Life. I never liked Your Love is King, I never liked Smooth Operator, and there's another one here which I actually did quite like, and I can't remember the name of it. I don't remember. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Is it when am I going to make a living? Anyway, 
I bought this because it was cheap and it was vinyl and I played it and again it's decent enough background music and I do quite enjoy it and if I see the second album I may pick it up. I appreciate this more now than I did then. I must have been, this is about 85 isn't it, or 84, so I was 18 years old. Um, I was more into Lloyd Cole and the promotions and the style council and the Smiths to listen to Sade but no yeah I actually do quite like this so if it has a scratch would I replace it at a decent price yeah next stop um, Culture Club uh, Kissing to be clever um, my excuse for buying this was I really do like do you really want to hurt me which I still really do like but I would still be found guilty of buying it because I have the single anyway this looked in really good nick and it was a pound so for a pound will I buy it? Yes I did. It's alright, it's not too bad. Um, it's got I'll tumble for you. Unfortunately it doesn't have time clock of the heart on it. I think that was only on the American version. But if this had a scratch on it would I buy it again? Probably not. Next up, and oh, I do not want to offend people with this, but Depeche Mode, Speak and Spell. I was not a Depeche Mode fan. I'm still not a Depeche Mode fan. But I did like New Life, and I had the single of New Life, and I saw this. And it was generally quite cheap for, because this is actually quite a sought after album. This is the first album, it's a, I think it's a UK Mute edition. And I played it, and it's alright, you know, it's not too bad. Um, just can't get enough, which I know I'm used to love. Um, again, New Life, and the other songs, I've played it twice, none of them have actually sunk in as, you know, to actually um, work out which songs are which, you know. It's, it's okay. I do prefer Yazoo, to be quite honest with you, but if this was scratched, would I buy it again? Probably. Next, another one that a lot of people do like and a lot of people claim, and I actually bought this because of the VC because so many people have talked about this. Um, phew, Tears for Fears, The Hurting. I was almost chairman of the Anti Tears for Fears fan club in the 80s. I couldn't stand them at all. Although I did like a couple of singles off this, especially Change and Peel Shelter. I bought this because so many people have said how good an album this is. And I thought, right, I'm going, I'll get it. Uh, it wasn't overly cheap. It was about six or seven pounds, but I still bought it. And I thought, yeah, I'll play it. Uh, it's all right. It's, again, Mad War the three singles, Mad World, uh, Change and especially Peel Shelter are the best on it. Would I get this again if it had a big scratch on it? I don't think so. I'd, I'd probably look out for one of their greatest sets to be honest with you. Next up, only because it was vinyl, Tina Turner. And in my defence, it's got the, the song Girls on it, which was written by David Bowie. Not one of his best either, but still. And I also really like the What You Get Is What You See and I played this and it's not great. It's not as good as our, um, what, what you call the one, is it Not Foreign Affair, the one before it, uh, Private Dancer, which is a far, far better album. But yeah, uh, it's okay. Um, I've now got about three Tina Turner albums. I was never a huge big fan of her voice, but maybe I do appreciate her a little more. Uh, would I buy this again if I had a big scratch on it? Uh, probably not. Okay, next one, <laughs> the Thompson Twins, Into the Gap. Now, I did love their album, Quick Step and Sidekick, I admit that, but I hated the song, Hold Me Now with a Passion. I thought it was clunky and awful, but I did quite like You Take Me Up because I bought that as a single, and Dr. Doctor was okay. I bought this because it was a pound, and I thought, right, I've got Quick Step and Sidekick, I'll get this as an accompaniment to it, and I played it, and I actually quite liked it. It wasn't bad at all. Um, I'm not too keen on Tom Bailey's voice at times, I think it's a wee bit jerky, but overall this is not a bad album, so 
If this one had a scratch, I probably would uh, for a pound, but that's it. Now this one was a surprise, and this is an excess kick. Um, yeah, I wasn't too keen on the singles on this at the time, like Need You Tonight, New Sensation. Um, there's a couple more in here, but whenever I played this I recognised a lot more than I actually knew the names of. And if I'm being honest, I enjoyed this. I thought this was very, very good. Um, I may get the, their next album as well. Um, this wasn't too dear either. It was around the £5 mark. And I thought I'll have a go. I remember my brother bought this in CD. And I thought, well, if he's going to buy it in CD, there must be something about it. Because uh, he's as happy as you'll get. Um, and stuck in his music more so than me. And yeah, I enjoyed it. So I would buy this again if it was, that got damaged. Okay, now this one. <laughs> I think this was only 50p. I think actually I would bought this for free. This is Imagination and Body Talk. Um, <laughs> under no circumstances would I have ever bought an Imagination single or album. But I looked at the track list and I thought Body Talk, Flashback, In Night of Love. I remember those. I'll give it a spin. If I don't like it, I'll throw it in the bin. I thought it was great. <laughs> I thought this was really, really good. Uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I won't play it that often and it's tacky. But uh, this would actually now be going into the sort of the guilty pleasure pile. You're not supposed to like it, but I do. And if this was scratched, I would actually get another one. And I would pay up to about three or four pounds for it actually. So, yeah. Another one, I never liked him. I appreciate him now more as a character, more than anything, and that's Billy Idol. I got heard Billy Idol too much in the 80s. If I ever heard White Wedding again, or what's that other one, uh, Rebel Yell, I would have gone daft. But I saw this and I thought, yeah, I'll have a go, and again, I enjoyed it. It's the greatest hits, that's all I need. I would never have bought any Billy Idol before. Um, I actually did quite enjoy it. Um, I always liked the Hot in the City. That was the one I did like, and um, Catch My Fall. So, if this got uh, scratched, yeah, I would pick it up again. And this one here, only bought this yesterday actually. Pet Shop Boys. Again, I would never have bought these guys way back in the day on vinyl or CD. And about this, and it's actually quite good. Neil Tennant's voice, uh, you know, it's, it can get annoying. But, yeah, I always thought that uh, always on my mind was on this, which was a really annoying it, because it's not. But I do like, you know, the singles. It's a Sin, Heart and Rent, and What Have I Done to Deserve This. But it's actually a, quite a good album. Like songs like King's Cross and It Couldn't Happen Here are actually quite good. I played this album this morning and I, and I enjoyed it. And I'll be honest with you, I bought the other one, the one before that, please, at the same time yesterday. Well, it was Friday, actually, at a decent enough price. Okay, and so, uh, I'm going to show three albums in a row. Now, I would never have bought these at the time, although I did have one when I was a kid. But I bought these for next to nothing, and these are the Top of the Pops albums. These are the first three that were ever released. That's the, the Volume 1. Um, that's the Volume 2. And that's the volume three. Um, these here were uh, covers albums um, by different artists. So there were the albums of chart hits of the day done by unknown artists and they sold for next to nothing. And it's for people who couldn't afford albums. So I bought a few of them uh, whenever I started getting back into the vinyl because they were like 10p each. And once you start buying and you see your collection of something growing, you have to have them all. And so I ended up getting every single one of them. And would I change them if they were scratched? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy them again because half of them are scratched. And so they are. Um, so that's it. So that's my video of risking the integrity. And I don't think much of my record collection, uh, the integrity has been risked at all or damaged. Sorry. I think most of the stuff I bought, although I wouldn't tend to play much of it again, maybe come back to it once in a blue moon, I still think, yeah, 
it deserves to be there. So have you bought any um, albums or records just because they're records? Um, if you have, let me know in the comments below. Okay, that's, for, that's all for me now. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.